Great to be with you today. We are talking again today on the topic of predestination, poison pill, or good news for everyone. Uh, sad to say, for many people, it's been a poison pill. This twisted interpretation of this wonderful word, predestination, which appears four times in the Bible, the twisted interpretation of that ha has caused people to give up on faith in Christ. And it's done so much more damage. But uh, hopefully if you listen to these teachings, you will come to the understanding how wonderful it is. And by the way, I forgot the other program to mention our teaching album that we are offering, uh, More God, Less Religion. You get four CDs. There may be even more by the time I get to finished uh, this. I'm just working on something extra, maybe a bonus CD. Um, but let me know that you want to receive this, and it's available with a gift of any amount. We, we discuss the topic of this week, but also other topics uh, that where, where I think the beautiful, I, I use a beautiful uh, picture of a delicious apple. Show that branch with apples. You know, th this is how the gospel is. It's just so beautiful. You, you want to bite into that apple, and you feel the burst of flavor in your mouth. It just explodes. Your taste buds can savor every moment of it. That, that's how the good news of Jesus Christ is. But then, you know, religion, which uh, Jesus calls the thief that kills and destroys and takes away from the abundant life, it's like uh, worms that crept into that apple. And uh, unfortunately, this uh, twisted idea of, of predestination is like a, a worm that, that rots at the core of that delicious apple. I want to remind you, you can call us. You see the information for the, for the prayer center, rather, the Grace Prayer Center. And you can text me your prayer request and anything else you want to say, any comment you have, or maybe you have a question, you want me to dig deeper into something that I'm talking about. Are you receiving our magazine? Uh, I hope you are. We, we offer it for free. Impact Magazine, beautiful, full-color magazine with teaching articles, testimony stories of what God is doing for people. And if you want to receive that, all you need to do is text me your contact information, and we will send it to you. We'll make sure you're included in the list of people who receive that. And so just go ahead and use the, uh, the phone number there, or you can call the Grace Prayer Center as well, or go online. Anything you do, you can go online. And you can give there, you can order free material, you can order uh, material that we are making available for, for, for a sale. You can do all that through all those means. All right, so back to our topic. Predestination, poison pill, or good news for all? Well, I think you know the way I'm going to weigh in on this, but it's not what I'm going to weigh in. It, it, it is time to speak about this in a forthright manner. You, you see the the popular definition of predestination, that's this poison pill I'm talking about, is that God predetermines those who will be saved and those who will not. It's like God just decides randomly, you're going to go to heaven, you're going to go to hell. Here's a definition given in a theological definition in a theological encyclopedia, God for his own glorification and without any regard to original sin has created some as vessels of mercy, others as vessels of wrath. Those, this is what it says, this is horrible, horrible. This is not good news, but this is the religious idea that I'm addressing. Those created for hell, it says, imagine that, suggesting that the majority of humanity created for hell. He has also predestined for sin. So even means even people who sin, they're predestined to sin. And whatever faith and righteousness they may exhibit, so even if a bad, bad sinner does something righteous or good, uh, are at most only apparent, since all graces and means of salvation are efficacious only for those predestined for heaven. So even if someone would do something good, oh, it doesn't really count, because they, they're predestined for hell anyhow. Imagine such an arrogant doctrine. It's taught. You'd be amazed. Hundreds, thousands of churches across Canada have a pastor that graduated from a Christian school that teaches this. Yeah. And, and, and they always say, oh, it's for God's glory. It's for God's glory. God, for his own glory, has selected people to go to hell, predetermined them. 
I guess if you have that view of God, poor little God, he doesn't have much glory. He, he, he gets at least further glory by, by, by having people tortured. What a despicable doctrine. And, and it's built on the doctrine of, of unconditional selection that God randomly selects for salvation and some for perdition. The exclusivity, the arrogance, the condescension. The, this, this kind of teaching has supported slavery, racism, oppression of women, and that some nations are chosen to rule over other nations. I say the idea of individual selection or individual exclusion incriminates God's nature, God's loving nature, and reduces what Jesus Christ has done for the world. It, it, it just is such a turnoff, but that's not my main point. See, if the Bible does say something, and if that turns people off, I'll say it anyhow. But when religion invents something in the name of the Almighty, that is not in Scripture, that is not in the spirit of Jesus, <laughs> and, and furthermore, it turns people off. Well, let's, let's, there's a reason why Jesus was popular among the common people, because he didn't exclude them. You see, the true message of predestination is wonderful. <laughs> it's a thrilling message that God has selected the entire world to be included in his salvation plan. I mean, you, you have God's general plan. Let me read it from Ephesians quickly. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to his, the good pleasure of his will. I taught on that verse a bit in a previous program. But just to say that uh, th this is God's plan, God's pleasure. And, and, and this is one of the only four times in the Bible that the word predestination appears. And then it says, in him we also, Paul, Paul is speaking of we the Jewish people, we who, we, we, we who were knew the patriarchs and the prophets, in him we also have obtained an inheritance. So he's saying even if you're a Jewish person, your inheritance is in Jesus Christ, being predestined that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So God's plan included the Jewish people. He predestined the Jewish people, but then he included the whole world. And there's so many verses about it, but just in the second chapter, verse 11, Paul says, remember that you once Gentiles by birth. Now he's not speaking to the Jewish people. He's speaking to the people in Ephesus. Gentiles, non-Jews, uncircumcised, far off, he, you know, Gentiles. He says, you were without Christ, aliens from Israel angel, and from the strangers of covenant of promise. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So he's saying, if you're a Jewish person, we have our inheritance in Jesus. And if you are a non-Jewish person, and that together includes the whole wild world, you've been brought near by the blood of Christ. That's about as far as I got last time. And um, but then it says, just the following verse, for he himself is our peace, who has made both groups into one. So see, when Paul is teaching to the Ephesians and to the Romans about predestination, he's talking about groups. He's not talking about individuals. Oh, God chose you for heaven. God chose you for hell. That's a poison pill. That's exclusion. That's putting people down. That, that makes people think, well, you know, this, this uh, member of my family or this person I talk to, they don't seem interested in the gospel. Oh, maybe they're not one of the selected ones. And so we end up judging. Uh, and, and so he says he has made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall that in himself and Jesus himself, he might make the two into one new humanity, establishing peace and might reconcile, reconcile them both to God. So a brand new humanity, a, a brand new order of things. Uh, that's the predestination. That two groups, the Jewish people had their calling, but then Jesus came and he's the fulfillment of all their inheritance. And then the whole world is predestined. So I say it again, predestination is not 
God choosing one individual and rejecting another. It's about God's desire that none would perish. Again, in the scripture verses that we have and in the chapters surrounding those verses, there is no mention of individual selection. And I'll get to some of you may say, well, what about this verse and that verse? Stay with me this week and I'll get to it. Rather, Paul is addressing prejudice regarding people groups. That the, the Jewish people were saying, oh, what is this new message? We are the chosen people. We are God's elect. Well, what is this new message that God has chosen the whole world? And Paul is hammering it. He says it's prejudice. You know, there was a popular movie. Many of you have seen this movie um, that, that addresses human prejudice. I thought just to, uh, I gave you a little, I have to think about a minute, a little clip from that movie, and I'll comment about what that movie clip says about our topic today. Here it is. Did you want to see some brochures? When Tula met Ian, <laughs> she found her man. I just want to spend a little time with you. And he found yeah! her family. No one in my family has ever gone out with a non-Greek before. Oh! A respectful boy would come here and ask for my permission. May I please date your daughter? No! You invited the whole family? Yeah! She's gonna be baptized tomorrow. Ian is a vegetarian. He doesn't eat meat. What do you mean he don't eat no meat? That's okay. I make lamb. My big fat Greek wedding. Well, that was a pretty good movie. You know, it was a low-budget movie, and I, I, I think they didn't expect it to have, be the worldwide phenomena that it was, but it deals in a way, maybe minuscule, but yet in a way that what I'm talking about. He, this was not Jewish and Greek. This was British and Greek. You have Ian and Tula and their families. And, and, and you'll find from the Greek family, Tula's family, it was not that they were wanted to discriminate against Ian. It was that Ian was British. And from Ian's family, it was not that they particularly were singling out discrimination against the, uh, the pretty girl Tula, no. It was that she was Greek. And it shows this, this difference of culture. But you multiply that a thousand times, you get the idea how the Jewish people felt about those dirty Greeks and the Greek felt about those Jews. It was It was... And, and, and so when, when Paul says there's neither Jew nor Gentile, there's no, the, neither Jew nor Greek, they're saying like, what do you mean? We are God's chosen. <laughs> and that's where you get this idea of predestination. The, the Jewish people, we are predestined. We are the ones. And then the message comes, no, it's for the whole world. And even your own prophets talked about that. They say like, wow, well, they just were protesting it. You see? Uh, predestination is about the reality spoken by the prophets that God has predestined the whole world to be included in his plan. <laughs> and the idea that this is some individual selection that God before birth from the beginning of time has knows that all these humans are going to be born, but many of them are predetermined for hell. That's a nasty worm that has snuck in to the tasty apple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul is, is using all of his argumentation. And Paul was an arguer. Could have been a lawyer, I guess. Maybe he was. Uh, we don't know that, what other training he may have had, except in the religious uh, belief. But he is persuading the, the people, the religious leaders who are so skeptical of dirty Gentiles. He says, no, 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 you're missing it. Predestination is not about a nation or an individual. It's about the whole world. You see, what, what Paul said here already in the scripture I read, he said the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ demolished any spiritual difference between Jews and Gentiles, chosen people and not chosen. That, that, that. He, he broke down the wall of partition. 
And, and so there's not two covenants or three covenants or five ways. No, Jesus includes all of the hu human race. He is Emmanuel, God with us humans. And, and it, just to continue there, where I was before I showed you the clip from uh, my big fat Greek wedding. I'm back in Ephesians now, uh, verse 17 in chapter 2. He came and preached peace to you. Now I'm speaking to you, to you non-Jewish people, to you Ephesians, to you people living in what is today modern day Turkey, to you who are afar off. That includes the whole world. And then to those who were near, Jesus preached to those who were near, to the Jewish people, for through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. You see, the Jewish people, they were of the bloodline of the prophets. They had heard the prophecies. It was passed down from generation to generation. And it was tough for them to recognize this equal access for all to come to God. They say, well, I'm special. You know, some people today, they still have a tough time with that. They think, well, you know, God loves the world, but, but I, I, I'm so special because I'm so good and I've done so many good. They had a tough time. And, and then and so Paul just keeps hammering it. Verse 19, in the context of predestination, that's what these chapters are about. Consequently, he says, you, you non-Jewish people, you all of the world, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people. You all, you know. Uh, I wish I could say it with that southern twang that some of you who listen to me from Kentucky uh, have, but you all means, I mean, this removes any doubt, all of you. No one is excluded. Then he says to, to just removing any doubt and to hammer the point home, he says in the next chapter, the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known as it has now been revealed by the Spirit, that the Gentiles, the whole non-Jewish world, should be fellow heirs with Israel and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. He says that this was like, you couldn't see it even though your prophets talked about it. They made it as plain as the nose on your face. The prophets said that the knowledge of the Lord would cover the whole earth. So he said this predestination is nothing new. It's been there that God predestined the whole world to be included. But, but you didn't see it. It was like a hidden gem that was there in front of you, but you didn't see it. But he says, now it's been revealed. And then he says, he says, to me, he's talking about himself, this grace was given. He, he's so excited. I get to tell the whole world that they are predestined to be included in God's plan. He says, to me, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see and make everybody see the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God. He says, I I've got this task. And Paul says similar verbiage about, I counted it once, close to 40 times. He says, I have received this from the Lord Jesus to reveal this to the world. Now, for us today, it it's, it's, it's hard to grasp. We read it from our own context, but Paul was addressing a deeply held religious prejudice that the Jewish people thought that they had God in their corner. They thought that they were especially chosen. They thought that they were selected. And it was offensive to them that suddenly the whole world was included. And, and, and similarly today, to some people, it's offensive. And, 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 and they create this doctrine. It goes back to, a, uh, well, it goes back to the fourth century where the first traces of this ugly poison pill can be found. And it goes back to Jean Calvin in Geneva who wrote his uh, Institutes of Systematic Religion or Theology. And so sad. He was 27 years old when he wrote this. He had just come to faith in Christ. And how sad it is that such a young believer 
has gotten such an influence on, on, on people, teaching them that, that God has predetermined who should be saved and who should be not. And sometimes when I hear the preachers who preach this, like John Piper, if you have his picture, you can put him there. Uh, I don't, I'll, I'll help you to find it in the production studio when we get this to the air. You know, talking about that when everything is predetermined, if a bridge collapses and 16 cars go into the river and people die, God predetermined that. You know, he says it with such a sweet little voice. Sounding so sweet. He must be much sweeter than me. I'm kind of a, you know, brusque speaker. Some of these people who say these awful things that God has predetermined people for hell, they say it with the sweetest voice. But the words they say are poison. I'm telling you wonderful good news. Predestination. <laughs> it's wonderful. God has predestined that the entire new Jewish world would be included in every promise that God gave to the Jewish people through Jesus Christ. Would you like to receive that? Would you like to take that for your own? Uh, first of all, I invite you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Just say like this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you that I'm included. Thank you that you tore down the barrier between different groups of people. And I receive you, live in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Amen. If you do that, you can see on the screen, they're putting up some material that is free. Yes, yours for the asking. And it will help you to live this new life with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, keep leaving that up there because I want those who, who uh, want to receive that. We don't want to rush so you don't see exactly how to do it. You can text me or you can um, go to the uh, Grace Prayer Center or online. Those are the three main options that we have. And, and then I encourage you, get a hold of my teaching album, More God, Less Religion. I really would like to say, you know, all God, no religion. But I thought I'd give you a soft title for this. Um, and, and so we kind of help you to deal with areas where this worm of religious corruption, corrupting influences crept in. You, you, and, and we want to take it out of there. So you get all this teaching, get it for yourself or get it for a friend. And uh, what do you pay for it? You decide what you want to pay. We'll send it to you. Whatever amount you give will go to the spreading of the gospel. So take a look at that. And, and right now, uh, take a look at a, a special message we have for you. The VIP family is about believers making their life count for Christ. The VIP family is a partnership with the Lord Jesus Christ and with one another. We believe in the cause of Jesus Christ. And together with Him, we are an unbeatable team. VIP stands for very important person and for visionaries in partnership. Billions of precious people don't see what Jesus Christ has done for them. Our mission is clear, to open their eyes to see the light of Christ's gospel. Millions receive hope and healing as the gospel touches their hearts. Jesus saves. Yes, Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hundreds of thousands of pastors are trained. True apostles and true prophets reveal Jesus Christ. Seven Bible school campuses equip students across Africa and Asia. Millions receive follow-up for new believers. Millions more are reached by television and social media campaigns. Persecuted Christians receive help and much, much more. The VIP family is about compassion for others and then about taking a step of faith. If we have a heart for God and the lost, this is the ministry to uh, support because they reach so many millions of people. Make your life count. Participate in daily gospel advancement. Participate in prayer and in convenient and constant giving. Many give monthly by automatic deduction from a bank account or credit card. Whatever your gift, you will participate in making history among those who have never heard the gospel. Call now, 416-745-1820, or give online 
www.give.peteryoungren.org. I, I want you to really think about the magnitude of this, our campaigns all over the world. I think about campaigns in countries like Ethiopia. You can see some of them on the screen there. Uh, where we have seen millions come to Christ. You can think in Guinea and Kenya and Tanzania and many other African nations, Madagascar. Uh, then, then in Asia, you know, Asia is often the forgotten place. I think in countries like Burma and in India and in Pakistan. And of course, more than 30 great campaigns across Indonesia. You see some of the pictures there. A producer has been laying them out uh, from different parts of the world. And when, when we do those campaigns, th this may sound shocking to you. When I give the invitation for people to receive Christ, generally more than 50% of the audience, because they come from religions that are not Christian, that are, they have, some of them never heard the gospel, more than 50% of the audience, in most cases, will respond to receive the gospel. I mean, it's, 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 when I first started to see this, it was shocking. I was used to church services. You, at maybe the invitation was given and you were thankful there was one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 people, however many people would receive Christ in a, in a Sunday morning service. And that's so wonderful. So when we started to see this enormous response, we had to prepare. We had to prepare follow-up material. We had to do the things that, 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 that we didn't just leave the harvest there. We wanted to put something in their hand. That's why I need your help. That's why I need you to give your best gift to stand with me in this gospel advancement work. Uh, you can give online or you can uh, text your gift. I think maybe there's all kinds of information there. Or you can call the Grace Prayer Center. I, I say thank you so much. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray there will be a big response right now. People who've thought about giving but never took the action, help them right now to reach out in faith and you will be blessed. Jesus said, if you prioritize him and his gospel, you will receive the maximum harvest, the maximum yield. Thank you in the name of Jesus. And then remember, miracles happen when you know how much God loves you. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1, or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.